This video shows how to quickly insert a chart to visually compare data in Excel. So I have some sample data here. This is just in essence we're going to say okay I have this many customers and this is the amount of money that I've collected from them this for this time period. Okay and so then I have a subtotal at the bottom and this is the data that I'm going to use to create a chart. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this data and this could be any data you want to track. This is just something that's easy visually to be able to understand how this works. So I'll click this data and then I'm going to say I'm going to go up to insert and I'm going to come over to chart and you can do recommended charts if you want to but I already kind of know what I want. For me I'm going to use a bar chart because I think that's going to best represent this data. As you can see there are lots of other charts here. So there's lots of different kinds. Some of the most common ones are going to be like these three right here I would say. So I'm going to click on the bar chart right here and then I'm going to just select a 2D column because I don't really need it to be fancy. And I don't want it stacked. If you notice here, these are going to stack your numbers. That is not at all what my data is. Mine's a comparison. I'm trying to say, how is each customer rated next to each other customer? So that way I can visually look at the data and immediately see who's really low or who's really high, right? That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to select that. And here's my chart. So you'll notice it sort of like inserts it on top of the data. So I just left clicked and dragged to move that over. So now if I look at my data, this is fairly small. I can make this bigger by just dragging and it'll automatically adjust. You can also see that one of my customers, it looks like I've sold a ton of whatever items I'm selling to, and it makes the data pretty skewed. Unfortunately, this is actually the total over here because I selected all my data and I did this on purpose so you can see how to make this change. So in a minute we'll show how to we'll do that change. You'll also notice that instead of having my customer names which I've just represented by letters I have numbers. So to change that I'm going to click on that axis and make sure that you're actually you actually click like you got to make sure you're in the right place. So I've clicked on that and I've selected those basically the labels for that data right and I'm going to right click and say select data and then from here I'm going to say edit so this is, let me click on, this would be the dates and this is the customer. So I'm on customer, which is what I want to change. I'm going to edit and it says access label range. So I'm going to go scroll back up over here and I'm going to grab these. I'm just left clicking and dragging because this is where my data lives. And actually I'll grab all of them even though I'm going to get rid of that later. Uh, and then I'm going to say, okay. And now if you look, now all my access labels are correct. So that's how you easily change those. If, and you can see in the background, this is already changed which is what I want. So I'm going to click OK and if I scroll back up now you can see that data is represented correctly. The next thing that we can do if you'll notice is we can change where the charts located. So you'll notice when I first created this it actually created it like over the top of the data up here. I had to scroll up so you could see it and it was really small and that might not be what I want. So um, I can move this chart easily by right clicking on it and saying move chart. So you'll notice I clicked in several different places and each time I was clicking I was activating different areas. So you kind of want to make sure you're grabbing like the entire chart. These if you like click on other little things these are like data points. This is the access. This is the key. This is the ti chart title. Those are all different pieces and you're going to get different menus when you click on those. So like this is definitely different. You don't see the move chart. If I click over here and I've basically selected the whole thing I right click and I have move chart. So when you're clicking on stuff, if you right click and you don't see the things I'm pointing out, it's because you're probably not clicked on the exact right piece of the chart. So I'm going to say move chart and I can do as an object in a, a specific sheet if I want to. The only This is where it is now, sheet one, which is what I have. Um, if I had other sheets, they would be listed in this drop down and you could pick which one you wanted it to go to. Or I can say new, che new sheet and it's going to call it chart one and I'm going to click OK and boom. Now I have an entire sheet of just this chart. And that's how you can move it. If I wanted to move it back, I could go through the same process. I could create another sheet. I can move it wherever I want to at any time. Once you move it to its own sheet, it becomes auto sized. So now it's much bigger. It's easier to see. And then the last thing we want to do that I want to show you how to easily do is because this is often happens is you selected the wrong data. So like this sort of misrepresents my data, this last line over here. And that's why we definitely want to change that because we don't want it to seem like that's exactly what we have. So the way that we're going to get rid of this, basically we just want to say we want all of these rows, we just don't want this one row here. So we're going to right click on the data and we're going to say select data. And then what we want to do is we want to enter that data here, but because we don't necessarily know exactly how far down the columns go because we can't see it, it's easier instead of typing it to select it. So we're going to go over here, I'm going to scrolling up in the background, I'm going to click on the first cell 
and I'm going to move over because I want both of these columns and I'm going to I'm just kind of pushing down with my mouse and I'm going to select until I get to the bottom minus the total because that's what's messing up my data. I'm going to say OK and when I go back now my data uh, also changed colors but <laughs> um, which is interesting but it removed that one client so that one customer that I have in here where my it was messing up the total values of my other clients. So all my other clients before looked tiny, tiny, tiny comparatively because the total was skewing the data. So before this said 120,000, now it's dropped all the way to 60. And so that is a easy way to change. Even after you've created a chart, you can easily change where the data selection is and how much data you have in here. The other way that comes in handy is say I wanted to insert a client and I insert a cell and I say, and then I typed in a number and if I go back to my chart, that's not there. You can see it's not there. So you could go through that exact same process by clicking on the data, right clicking saying select data, and then choosing the data again. So I'm just going to select and I'm going to include that data now. Say OK. And now that's in your chart. So you can easily remove and add data anytime and it's still really quick to update your chart. If you change the data over here, the prices, this is going to change on the other end as well. It'll automatically change. So if I go back here, now V whoop, just got really big. So it's live data, so it changes automatically. And that's how you quickly add a chart so that you can compare data values.